Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to Harvest at Home Wednesday Night Bible Study. So glad you're joining us again, and we are looking forward to yet another blessing in the Word of God. The Lord has just been so faithful to all of us during the challenging times that we're facing in our nation. And like the song says, He keeps on doing great things for us. So last week I was encouraging all of you who have a praise report uh, to go ahead and send one in, to send it to the church, and I would try to share one or two testimonies at the beginning of Bible study each week. How many of you know that during times like these, we need to hear some good news, right? The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. So let me read one of the testimonies to you that was sent by Carlos and Janice Calderon. Here's what they said. They just wanted to thank the Lord for helping them to sell their home uh, because they've been living in, in it for 17 years. And the miracle is they sold it themselves. And on top of that, it only took two days to sell. <laughs> two days. So they were saying that God is good and he made a nice and smooth transition with lots of learning experiences. And they saw his hand in every step of the way. And for that, they give him all the glory and all the honor. Amen. So hallelujah. Um, I just thank the Lord for continuing to be faithful during times like these. I want to encourage you that if God is blessing you, if the Lord is working miracles for you, if the Lord is keeping you, send that testimony to the church. Share it with the saints of God. Let others be encouraged. Remember, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, right? Somebody might say, well, I don't have a testimony. Well, your testimony can be that during COVID-19, you kept on praying, you kept on fasting, you, you kept on reading your word, or, or maybe your testimony, testimony will be that you started a prayer group. Maybe the Lord is leading you to start an online Bible study. It doesn't take much. It, it just takes a willing mind. And it doesn't take many people. The Bible study, uh, the Bible says that we're two or more gathered together in his name. He'll be right there in the midst. So now is not the time to sit back on God like he's given us a vacation. But, but, but now is the time to work while it's day. And maybe there are some of you out there that the Lord, it's placing it on your heart to do more. Well, I want to encourage you to do it. OK, in Jesus name, you won't regret it. OK, so with that, let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. All right. <clears throat> Father, in Jesus's name, we come before you. We give you glory and honor and praise. We ask that you would hear our prayer. Wash us and cleanse us of all sins. Lord, I'm asking that the word that goes forth tonight would bless the saints of God, would minister to our souls and would help us through every difficult and challenging time. Let souls be saved, minds be delivered, and let us be set free in the name of Jesus. So for the last several weeks, we've been learning about the benefits of suffering. And for those of you that may be coming into the teaching uh, right in the middle, let me give you a brief synopsis of what we've been talking about. We're using a book by Watchman Nee called The Character of God's Workman. Uh, we've made it very clear that the suffering that we're talking about only applies to that which we suffer for the Lord's sake. It, it only applies to suffering for Christ. So it doesn't really apply to those things that are brought on by ourselves. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we learned that um, things about suffering. Uh, the first thing was that suffering is not involuntary. In other words, we deliberately choose to suffer because it's the path that's least common. But the good news is that the suffering of this present world is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. So one of the blessings in suffering is that the Lord is perfecting us. So we went back and we used 1 Peter 4 and 1. That says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. So the comforting part in that scripture is the knowledge that 
Jesus has already suffered for us as an example, right? Then the next week we learned that um, being willing to suffer and actually suffering are not the same thing. And that our current circumstance is not indicative of our mind to suffer. So, so what does that mean? That means that we can be in the most favorable situation and still possess the mind to suffer. But another person uh, might be uh, enduring a very difficult situation, but they don't have a mind to suffer. So consequently, their suffering is of no value. Um, yeah, I know that last week was heavy. Then we went on and we learned how we have to be careful not to collapse at the slightest calamity, not to throw in the towel when times get hard, not to crumble when the wind blows. But some people do this when they don't have the mind to suffer. But we have to make it up in our minds that we're going to lean and depend on the Lord to see us through everything. Then finally, last week, we learned that the work of the we learned that um, the work of the ministry the, the work that the Lord has called you to do, it won't wait for you. The work cannot wait for you. Not only will it not wait for us to do it, but there are those Christian workers that will actually withdraw from the work when it's outside, when the outside demands of life exceed their ability. They withdraw when they think there's too much on them. They withdraw when they get overwhelmed, uh, when they don't think they can handle it anymore. So we really have to ask the Lord in prayer, Lord, help me not to withdraw from your work when I get overwhelmed. Mm. Uh, I'm just thinking about it. And we have learned so much um, so far. But remember, all of the spiritual lessons are going to benefit us in the long run because we know that um, these teachings are going to help us. And these teachings will allow the Lord to show us where we're weak and where we're strong in the spirit. This is good to know because just like in the natural, every elite athlete knows his strengths and his weaknesses. If he doesn't know his strengths and his weaknesses, how will he know what works best for him? If he doesn't know his own strengths and weaknesses, how will he ever improve himself? And, and we want to improve ourselves in the spirit, right? That's why we're in Bible study tonight, right? That's why we do what we do in the Lord. You and I need to know how to improve ourselves in the spirit. Didn't the Apostle Paul say that we're all running a race? Didn't he say that, 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 that we have to run the race as if we're the only ones running it? And we're not running just to run. Oh, no, we're running to win the race, right? OK, so. We know Jesus suffered for us according to 1 Peter 4 and 1. And uh, we know that we need to arm ourselves likewise with that mind. We need to have the same mind to suffer. We, we, we all know that, that we're going to suffer trials and tribulations. Um, we know that we're going to be uncomfortable sometimes. We know that we'll be inconvenienced. We know that we may suffer losses. But we can't allow our whole being to collapse at the slightest trivial problem. We, we can't collapse at the slightest calamity because the believer who does this, he's like the tin man from the Wizard of Oz. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, did, did you ever see the Wizard of Oz? Okay, if not, just Google it, just Google it. Um, but you see the tin man in the Wizard of Oz, he had no heart. So he went to find the Wizard of Oz so he could get a heart. He didn't have a heart. How many of you know that nobody wants to go to battle with a soldier that has no heart? Do you know that what wins battles? Heart. Do you know what wins races? Heart. Do you know what wins games? Heart. Do you, did you know what wins people to the Lord? It's your heart. We don't want to be like the tin man. We don't want to be like the believer that has no heart. So turn with me over to 1 Peter 5 and 10. 1 Peter 5 and 10, right? And, I, and I've told you there, there are benefits to suffering for the Lord. Uh, but those of us who've been saved for a while, we know that only, those benefits only come after you've endured hardness as a good soldier. The, 
the benefits only come after you've stood the test of time. Uh, the, the benefits only come after a while, not before. So what does 1 Peter 5 and 10 say? But the grace of, but the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, then he will make you perfect. Then he'll establish you and then he'll strengthen and settle you. You see, it says after we've suffered a while, the benefits don't come before suffering. They come after we've suffered a while, after we've gone through some things, after we've had time to see God's faithfulness, after we've had time to see God move for us in this area and in that area, and after we, we have trusted God with everything in our lives. That's when the benefits come. That's when the blessings come. And that's when God opens the windows of heaven and pours you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. After we've suffered a while, then he makes us perfect. Then he establishes us and then he strengthens us. Then he settles us after we have suffered a while. So so let's go to my first point tonight. The first thing I want you to know tonight is that quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. All right. Look in our book, uh, The Character of God's Workman. Look on page 44 in the first paragraph. All right. Um, Watchman Nee says, For you cannot come to the Lord and say you quit because you encounter some unexpected difficulty or trial. No one who serves the Lord may stay home during rain and go forth only after the sun comes out. Woo! Somebody say, help, Lord. Listen, quitting is not an option. Watchman Nee is saying that those of us who have truly given our lives and our hearts to Jesus, for those that have given up this world to follow him, and for those that have declared plainly that we seek a country, and for those of us that are looking for a city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God, for that group of people, quitting is not an option. If we claim the name of Christ, if we claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, quitting is not an option. I remember a while back, um, I remember seeing a highlight of a female mixed martial arts fighter. Now, I must say I'm not a huge fan of the sport, but I remember um, that one of the fighters was placing the other fighter's arm in a submission hold. And, and, and she was pulling it in a direction it wasn't supposed to go. And the fighter whose arm was in danger, all she had to do was slap the mat to end the match. All she had to do was slap the mat to get the pain to stop. All she had to do was slap the mat to signify that she had given up. But to my surprise, she refused to slap the mat. Because in her mind, quitting was not an option. This athlete was willing to suffer pain because quitting was not an option. She, and she allowed her arm to be injured before the referee even stopped the fight. Mm. Now, I'm certainly not saying that you should allow somebody to break your arm. Lord, no. But I, I'm, I, I am saying that, and, and I'm not saying that you should allow someone to injure you. But I use this example because it represents the type of heart we must have as a child of God. It, it represents the type of heart we must have as a soldier in the army of the Lord. It, it represents the type of mind that must be present when a person, see, because when a person has a mind to suffer, quitting is not an option. So let's go back to what Watchman Nee wrote. Um, let's see. For you could not come to the Lord and say you quit because you encounter some unexpected difficulty or trial. How many of you know that as long as you live saved, you're going to encounter some expected difficulties and some expected trials? It's inevitable. It's it's going to happen. It's 
It's like when you get married. Uh, uh, when two people get married, they say, oh, we're never going to argue. Uh, they, they say, uh, their marriage is not going to be like the rest of those marriages. We're always going to get along. We're always going to see eye to eye. Oh, it's going to be lovey-dovey. Oh, my brother, my sister. <laughs> well, what every spirit-filled married couple wants you to know is that into every life, a little rain must fall. Into every marriage, a little rain will fall. In every relationship, there'll be some bad weather and some good weather. You're going to experience difficulty. You're going to experience trial. Anytime you bring two grown people together with two different brains and two different bodies and two different upbringings and two different ways of thinking, there is bound to be some unexpected difficulties and some unexpected trials. But quitting mm -hmm, is not an option. Well, at least it's not supposed to be. And so that's why when you slowly march down that aisle and, and you let everybody uh, in the building stand up for you, and you watched all the cameras take pictures of you, your parents uh, gave you away, then everybody claps. Everybody gave you presents. I want to tell you that they didn't give you those presents so you could quit after a year. That they didn't give you those presents so you could throw in the towel. I want to tell you that, that God didn't give us the gift of his son, Jesus. He didn't give us the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he didn't give us the gifts of the spirit so we could quit after a week or so we could quit after a month or, or, or quit after a year. He didn't give us his precious Holy Ghost so we could throw in the towel. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Thank God for Jesus, because quitting is not an option. Right. So now. So now Jesus is going to make you. Um, now, Jesus is not going to make you serve him. He, he's not going to twist your arm. We're, we're all free moral agents and we have the right to choose. But the Lord does want you to endure hardness as a good soldier. And, and, and I think that's what the scripture says. Right. So Watchman Nee is saying that we shouldn't come to the Lord and say we quit because we encounter some unexpected difficulty or trial. We, we have to understand is when a person has a mind to suffer, they will work in spite of difficulty. They will work in spite of pain. They will work in spite of sickness. They will work in spite of trial. They have learned to tell the devil, devil, I'm going to work no matter what you throw at me because quitting is not an option. See, because I realize, devil, that I was bought with a price and blood of Jesus was shed for me. I belong to Jesus. D -d Does anybody out there belong to Jesus? You have to be bold because out of the abundance of your mouth, the heart speaks and you've got to tell the devil sometimes you do. Uh, 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 on one hand, You've got to pray and talk to God. Right. And on the other hand, you've got to, to, to rebuke the devil. You've got to tell him you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my children. Satan, the Lord rebukes you in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. You've got to talk to him because. But but I want you to I want to tell you that what happens with some people is this. The Lord saves them. He fills them with the spirit. They make up their mind to serve God and and they're doing well for a while. But then they become afraid. And, and, and this is really the next point I want to make. Fear produces failure. OK, fear produces failure. And on the one hand. Uh, th this. We can't become afraid in our walk with Christ, because if a person is inwardly afraid, right, then they'll fall away at whatever provocation Satan brings to them. Any little threat will cause them to give up. Any threat will cause them to fall. But if a person's not afraid, then they have the ability to resist the devil. Oh, I pray that you're hearing what I'm saying. So because if you're not afraid, you'll say, I'm not afraid of being hungry. Then when Satan threatens you with hunger, 
you'll stand firm and you'll stand and you'll, you'll, you'll resist the devil and the devil will flee. If you say, I'm not afraid of being alone, right? Then when Satan threatens you with isolation, you'll stand firm. And if you stand firm, the devil will flee. Because the Bible says in James 4 and 7, it says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Right. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But we can't resist the devil until we proclaimed that we're not afraid. And remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks and the power of life and death is in your tongue. So you have to say it. I'm not afraid of temptation. I'm not afraid of trials. I'm not afraid of tribulations. I'm not afraid of loss. I am not afraid of pain. Does, does this make any sense, right? You've got to say it out loud. You've got to speak those things which be not as though they were, right? So, for example, uh, the babe in Christ or, uh, or the new believer, they, must they have to declare that they're not afraid to suffer loss because you can rest assured that when you confess your faith in Jesus Christ and when you tell them that not only do you believe what the Bible says, but you're going to do everything in your power to live by it. Right. You're going to do everything in your power to live saved. You can rest assured that there will be some people who don't agree with your belief. There'll be some people who turn and walk away from you. How do I know this? because they turned and walked away from Jesus, right? When he told them that he was the bread of life that came down from heaven, they said, this man's crazy. Now he, he serves up a good meal and he preaches a good sermon, but he's beside himself. And the Bible says over in St. John 6 and 66, it says from that time on, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. They no more walked with him. These were Jesus's disciples. They left him because they didn't agree with what he had to say. And you and I can rest assured that if some people left Jesus, you know, some people will leave us. But, but we must be able to declare and proclaim I am not afraid to suffer loss. I am not afraid to be unpopular. I am not afraid to walk with Jesus. But this can this can be difficult for some new believers. In fact, it can be difficult for some not so new believers. But if the believer doesn't boldly declare this, he will most certainly draw back into the world. The Bible says that the friendship with the world is enmity with God, right? So the saints of God must be careful not to go along with everything the world does, everything the world says. We, we must be careful not to imitate and emulate everything the world does and everything the world says. That there should be a difference in the behavior of those who belong to God and those who don't. And, and even the world knows that, that if you want to be successful, Surround yourself with successful people. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be unsuccessful, then surround yourself with unsuccessful people. If you want to be filled with joy, surround yourself with joyful people. If you want to be filled with sadness, surround yourself with sad people. But in like manner, if you want to be filled with the mind of Christ, we should surround ourselves with others that have the mind of Christ. A and I am not saying that we should not love all mankind. And, and I am not saying that we can't maintain friendships with the unsaved. Mm -mm. In fact, this is one of the only way that, or is one of the main ways to win lost souls to Christ. The Bible says in order to have friends, we must first show ourselves to be friendly. This is all a part of having the love of God shed abroad in your heart. And the reason many believers fall back into their old ways and the reason many believers fall back into their old lifestyles is because they haven't declared to the devil that they're not afraid. 
that they won't be intimidated by Satan's devices, that, they, that they're going to resist the devil. And if, the, and if they resist the devil, the devil will flee. If you resist the devil, he will flee. OK. All right. Do me a favor. Let's look at the second part of Watchman Nee's statement on page 44. OK. First, he says, for you cannot Come to the Lord and say you quit because you encounter some unexpected difficulty or trial. No one who serves the Lord may stay home during the rain and go forth only after the sun comes out. Oh, my goodness. See, this last statement is a real educated way of saying We can't be fair weathered friends of Jesus. Jesus doesn't need any more fair weathered friends. He he doesn't need anybody else deserting him in the Garden of Gethsemane. He, He doesn't need anybody else following him from afar off while he's going from judgment hall to judgment hall. He he doesn't need anybody mocking him and saying he's the king of the Jews. Jesus is not looking for folks to go home, that go home when the rain starts. (laughs) And then when it stops raining and the sun comes out, they show up for the barbecue. Oh, come on, somebody. Mm -mm -mm. Have you ever had any friends who only show up when the sun is out? (laughs) Have you ever had any friends who only show up when you're paying for dinner or they only show up when you're cooking the food. They only show up when you've got plenty of money. They only show up when you're popular. They only show up when everything is looking good. Oh, but when the rain starts, when the deluge comes into your life and and, and they just scatter like roaches. And when the rain comes, they're almost like the wicked witch of the West. (laughs) They, They melt away. They fall off like dandruff. And when times get hard for you, they're nowhere to be found. When trials and tribulations come against you, they run for cover. And you turn around and say, hey, wait a minute. I prayed for you. Wait a minute. I cooked for you. I I fed you. I put clothes on your back. I put shoes on your feet. You can't quit on me now. But isn't that what Jesus is saying to us? Wait a minute. I died for you. Hey, wait a minute. I saved you. I delivered you. I set you free. I put shoes on your feet. I put clothes on your back. I put money in your pocket. I gave you a job when you didn't have a job. I gave you peace when you had no peace and I filled you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. Where are you going You can't quit on me now. (laughs) Too many times people give up on God because of fear. And fear produces failure. But the Bible says over in 2 Timothy, the first chapter and the seventh verse, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, And we don't have to let fear cause us to fail. Because we know that fear doesn't come from God. Fear comes from the depths of hell. And fear is a spirit that comes over us and tries to intimidate us. How many of you know the devil is always trying to intimidate you through fear? He wants you to give up. He wants you to go back. He wants you to get frustrated and he wants you to become discouraged. He wants you to go back into the world. But but don't give the devil the satisfaction of getting the victory over you. Listen, I told you at the beginning of Bible study that you've been brought with a price and that price was the precious blood of Jesus. Don't you know that the blood has never lost its power? All right. Why do you think that the devil fights you so hard? Because he knows the blood hasn't lost its power. He knows he's already defeated. He knows his fate is already decided. So he tries to intimidate you with fear and with condemnation because he knows your soul is lying in the balance. So remember, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay. so let me give you one more point before we close today. 
bed or no bed, I will work. Bed or no bed, I will work. <laughs> Pastor Rob, what are you talking about? Why are we talking about beds now? Well, we're talking about beds because Watchman Nee makes a statement on page 45 that says, to have the mind to suffer denotes that regardless the condition of the bed, you will work on. What does that mean? Well, the writer gives us an example, and the gist of it is this. If there's a person who's traveling, and because of their physical weakness or infirmity, they need to sleep on a better bed, you know what I mean? They can't sleep on the floor. They can't sleep on a mattress that's too soft, too hard. It, if this is their condition, this will affect their effectiveness in traveling. They won't be able to stay at every hotel or at every house or every lodging place all because of their infirmity. And in like manner, if the servant of God insists that he must sleep on a comfortable bed because of his infirmity, then that's exactly where Satan will attack him. Satan will always try to cause the, that brother to have an uncomfortable bed to sleep on. In other words, if we've proclaimed our weakness, if we have not resisted the devil in his attempt to intimidate us, then Satan will always make us sleep on that bed. He will always attack us at our weakest point. But having the mind to suffer is when a person says this, regardless of the condition of my bed, right? I will still do the work. I will still be faithful. I will still love the Lord. I will still endure hardness as a good soldier. If the bed is lumpy, I'll serve. If the bed is too hard, I will not draw back. If the bed is not right, I will not turn around. Regardless of my condition, I'm sorry, regardless of the condition of my bed, I will still do the work. Bed or no bed, I will work. So I ask you today, what's the condition of your bed? And are you working in spite of that? What's the condition of your circumstance? Are you serving the Lord in spite of that? What's the condition of your physical or mental health? Is it stopping you from saying yes to the Lord? Bed or no bed, I will work. This is the type of attitude that we talk about this is what's meant when we talk about someone who's, who has a mind to suffer. I want you to know these are the types, these teachings right here are the types of teachings that will cause you to become spiritually mature. But not only the teaching itself, but the application of the teaching. We, we must apply and put into practice what we're learning. The Lord is using everything in our lives right now to help develop us. He wants to make us. He wants to mold us into the image of his dear son, Jesus. And so I want you to remember there are three things. Number one, quitting is not an option, right? Number two, fear produces failure. And last but not least, bed or no bed, I will work. All right. So listen, let me pray for you tonight, okay? We're going to pray according to what Watchman Nee was teaching, according to what the Word of God said. And I'm going to pray that the Lord would keep us and strengthen us, allow us not to quit, not to give up, allow us not to uh, be turned away by fear. And then bed or no bed, we're going to work. Let's look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we give you glory. Lord, Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of the word. Father, I pray that you have sent your word out and you are able to heal us all. 
And Lord, with this word, help us to turn and look at ourselves. Help us to know that in Christ, quitting is not an option. Lord, you're not looking for the swift. You're looking for those that will endure until the end. Lord, help us not to quit before we get to the finish line. Help us, Lord. You said in your word that the good work that you have begun in us, you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, quitting is not an option. And then, Lord, we rebuke Satan who would try to bring fear into our life. And we know that fear only brings failure. And Father, in Jesus' name, I ask, Lord, that you would send the enemy away in seven different directions. And Lord, because you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Oh, Jesus, thank you. And then, Lord, I know we're going through things. I know that the bed that we're lying in may be uncomfortable. But Father, bed or no bed, comfort or no comfort, ease or no ease, we will work. Lord, give us this mind. We vow to give you glory. We vow to give you praise. We say hallelujah to your name. And we, Lord, today we vow that we'll give you all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, thank you so much for joining us today at Harvest at Home. And I'm just so glad that you were able to share the word of God with us. I encourage you, don't forget to send in those testimonies or those video testimonials. And I also look forward to seeing you Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Sunday morning for morning service. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen.